Good morning or good afternoon everyone. Welcome if you're new here, my name is Polly. Today we'll be diving into a video that has been requested many times and that is to give my take on some of these popular yet fake gold hunting videos. The reason I'm doing this isn't because I'm mad or I want to make you guys not watch their videos but it's just to give respect to the actual world of prospecting and how difficult and challenging it really is. Now let's get into it. So first of all, gold prospecting is a fun and exciting hobby once you learn all the ways you can locate and extract the beautiful stuff. Some people dedicate their entire lives trying to find the life-changing deposit of gold, as some would call the mother load. And unfortunately, most people fail. And that is because without getting too in depth, it's very hard. You actually have a better chance of finding a five carat diamond than a one ounce gold nugget. So it's no surprise that you will come across people claiming to be finding an abundance of this mother load for attention, but for us real prospectors, it's not good attention. However, with just a few minor critiques, you can spot which ones are real and which ones are faux. So our first contestant is Golden Beard Media, which I believe consists of a dude and his friends. For the record, being that he's on a river in all of his videos, the gold that he's going to be finding is called placer gold, which is gold that has been deposited by a river or glacier and is not what one would call hard rock gold. Now, there are just too many videos I could talk about. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to point out some consistent major red flags. Number one, item location. Although tiny specks of gold can be found laying with sand, if these were real placer gold nuggets of that girth, they would not end their millions of years traveling and dragging along that bedrock only to land in a, a pile of sand or inside some vegetational soil. Great for growing vegetables. Chances are they would have dug themselves so deep within the first couple of years that they would either be wedged in some bedrock crevice or way down deep stuck in the clay, like this monster gold nugget that was found in Australia. <laughs> Number two, weight. Gold is heavy. And if they can lift it with one hand, they can have it. And something this size is very heavy and probably not something they would know. You're going to have trouble picking it up with one hand. Notice with these real nuggets, they sort of just toss them in the air a bunch of times. It's something everybody does naturally because it's truly hard to comprehend how heavy gold is for its size. That doesn't make sense. Plus, when handling heavy objects, it's much harder just to massage something that heavy like what they're always doing. Here's a piece of tungsten, which is almost the same density as gold, and it's even smaller than the thing that they're using. And look how difficult it is to pick up. It weighs a ton. And here's a smaller piece of gold. And here's a pine cone. In this clip, I really want to say that they're using a rock, but it's way too light to be a rock. Just look how easy it is to move around. That thing probably floats. Quickly, if you love gold and real adventures, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss another upload. Number three, discovery. If gold was that easy to find in an area, chances are it would have been discovered years ago during the gold rush. Not always, but I imagine they didn't walk very far from their vehicle to get to the spot, so yeah. Also, I highly doubt they'd be monetizing these videos as just one nugget that size would probably change your life for the better. And honestly, if it was that easy to find, gold would significantly be less valuable. But if not, most likely the area would have been monitored by claims or even actual gold mining operations. Number four, reactions or lack of. In fact, whoever edited this put in those beeping sounds like when you swear, just to try to make it look like they were swearing as if these robots actually had emotions, but they forgot to beep over the sound of the river, which proves nobody actually said anything. Anytime somebody's found a nugget, they're pretty excited. Oh, frick. oh wow. my gosh! Now if they found a bigger nugget, they're even more excited. Dude, guys, this is, oh my God, look what we just found, dude, this is amazing. But not any of these folks, simply because they're not real. And if they were real, they certainly didn't find it. Number five, material. Most of what they're using resembles rocks, but the pieces that do resemble some type of metal, do actually go off with a metal detector. Which, in my opinion, could be aluminum from the beer cans they melted after celebrating all the views they're getting on their videos. Yay! I'm slightly jealous. Yay! But then again, still way too light. Here is what aluminum looks like, and here's what it looks like with gold color. Pretty close, huh? And here's a pine cone. The secret of this gold nugget is Krylon. 
paint. It also would be hard just to hide a little piece of tin foil underneath the sand and just get that shot where you hear the detector going off, but my opinion. Number six, publicity. If you were actually finding gold nuggets this big, it would probably end up on the news, like all the other famous nuggets. It would be such a big deal, you would be freaking out. I know I would be. You'd be calling your friends, maybe posting it online, but maybe not. It would just be very hard not to get the word out. However, if you were smart about it, you could keep it a big secret and keep this amazing discovery away from everybody else, which does happen. But then again, if you wanted to cash it in, you would have to get it authenticated and then place on the market, which in no time would be hitting them headlines. You could also get somebody else to do the dirty work for you to keep your name anonymous. However, that nugget would still get attention and you would at least see it online somewhere. Something else that they wouldn't be doing for attention is uploading it on YouTube. Which brings me to number seven, hiding their identity. They don't show their face, they don't show their eyes, and they don't speak. <laughs> They actually use some type of voiceover. I think I found it. And did I mention they don't show their face? It's okay not to show your beautiful face. I know other channels out there that don't show their face. And in fact, this channel, I used to not show my face. When I did, I wore a dumb mask. But there is enough evidence here that suggests they aren't just camera shy. I imagine if one of their faces did get out there, somebody would figure out who they are, where they work, and at least report them for littering. Number eight, other stuff. There are cuts in the frame before discovering the items. The surface of whatever they're using resemble fragile rocks and or sometimes aluminum, breaking into not so solid bedrock only to cut the frame and discover a piece of plaster gold that wouldn't actually be found there unless it's hard rock gold or it's in a deep crevice, which it is not. And even using cheap no-name metal detectors that wouldn't find anything that deep. I also left a comment on one of his videos and I said, let's collaborate. I just ordered nine pounds of aluminum. And to my surprise, he deleted did the comment. We could have been friends. And for the record, I'm not mad at this guy. I'm slightly jealous of his views, but I'm not mad. He can do whatever he wants. I mean, he's that's how he's putting food on his table, and I understand. But how dare he discredit the real prospectors like myself and other people out there, because it's not fair and he should be grounded. What? what Our next guest is definitely not gonna take as long as I've already covered most of the things that this guy is doing as well, except there's jewelry. I hustle and motivate. Follow me, I know the way. 50 cents. A few people, including Chris Ralph, Flo State, and Mike Russell, have already debunked this guy. Don't believe them. Fake. It's not real. So let's just point out the big ones other than he's already been exposed. There's so much wrong with this. <laughs> so this is clearly just a broken piece of rock. It's not even round, it's not worn, it's not, there's, there's nothing about it that says gold other than the spray paint that's on it. In fact, they spent more money on that spray paint than what that rock is worth, but they're not doing it for that, they're doing it for the views, and obviously this guy has views, so it's worth it for him. Oh my God, I had no idea. Gold's magnetic. It's not actually magnetic. So for those of you who don't know, gold isn't magnetic. And if it was, my job would be way, way easier. But what is magnetic is magnetite, which is basically black sand. And it's why you see it sticking to that magnet, which tells us that's a real magnet, but everything else, not real. Flow State actually visited this particular spot where Maximov Row was finding the magnetic painted lead and glass? And well, it's safe to say that he didn't find any rare gemstones or magnetic gold. It's fake. It's baloney! Taking a closer look at these so-called gemstones, they really are either just glass or plastic. Very easy to find this stuff online. Any real gemstone like these and of this size wouldn't be sharp like these are and wouldn't be found in this type of shape in a river. The colors, quality, and what he is finding alongside them <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting dream, but... Also just seems out of place. So is it possible to find jewelry on the river? Yes. This much jewelry in that capacity? No. It is very, very unlikely you're going to find that much jewelry in that kind of space 
on a river. It is more believable to find it on a popular beach where people are drinking and partying and such rather than a flowing river because the way things deposit on a river versus a beach are very different. On a beach, when things get buried, it's gonna settle. The waves are gonna hit it and go back and forth, back and forth, it's just gonna sink and it's eventually it's just gonna settle. Whereas in a river, if you have a necklace that falls into the river, that river is gonna be constantly pushing it and pushing it, it's gonna be dragging along, but also because it's heavy, it's gonna be sinking and it's gonna get tangled and it's, it's just gonna disappear. So the whole fact that he finds all this in one area with no problem at all, it's baloney! So some red flag trends that we're starting to see in all these videos are ridiculous finds, hiding their identity, wrong weight, wrong location of items, wrong material, no reactions, hiding comments, using the same items twice, and a bunch of other stuff. Now these are just two out of the handful of baloney videos that are out there. Gold Treasure Exploration, Treasure Hunter, Yashashri, Claris, Diamond Hunter, How, Underworld, Treasure Hunt, and QTPL, and even a lot more. Now with all this negative critique, I do have to say their thumbnails mwah, are on point. They are bright, eye-catching, and that's what grabs the attention of the viewer. And after all, that's what YouTube wants. Clicks equals ad views equals money for YouTube. Although I have to say, when you're using a big yellow shiny object like what they're always using, it makes it so much easier to make a catchy thumbnail than it is to use a little piece of gold and over-dramatize the thumbnail like me and everybody else likes to do. <laughs> What upsets me the most isn't that these people are making an income from these videos. It's that they're giving people a false expectation of what gold prospecting really is. Myself and others dedicate our entire lives to creating genuine and real content for viewers. It just sucks that these people who know nothing about prospecting are luring these people with catchy thumbnails and fake finds only to educate them on nothing because they really know nothing. And in contrast, it doesn't only make our videos look bad, but it makes it look like we don't know what we're talking about and we don't know how to find gold gold. And what actually makes me sad is if you read some of these comments, these are genuine people asking real questions about prospecting. And unfortunately, they will never get the answer from these guys. YouTube doesn't care what's real or what's fake. As again, clicks equals ad views equals money for YouTube. Now I could absolutely make this video a five hour long video discussing all these channels that are fake and why they're fake, but honestly, it's just not worth it. And it really sucks that people are marching around with their tin foil, their paint, their broken glass glass and jewelry and making it seem like they're the legit thing. <laughs> it's baloney! I guess my whole conclusion is these creators aren't here to educate you. They're here to entertain you with make-believe stuff and perhaps make you think that Finding treasure is easy and it takes no skill. Anyways, I hope you learned something. That is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, chances are you're going to enjoy what I've previously posted and what's coming in the future. If you like this video, please let me know because this is the first time I've ever done a review video and they're actually kind of fun. If you want to see anything else extra, I do have other social media platforms open for your pleasure, including a Patreon account where you can see some exclusive stuff, including some early access to some videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And until next one, black screen. and aluminum. Now, if you want to learn how to find gold for real, I recommend these two videos right here.